The first category of forces that your book talks about are long range forces. Um, we've been using, you know, most of these so far already this semester. Uh, for example, we said the force of gravity is mass one times mass two times Newton's constant G over R12, uh, and that's in the direction, uh, the R12 hat direction. So what we mean by that is if we have some object one and some object two, there's a vector that goes from one to two to their cent from the center of mass of one to the center of mass of two, right? And this is R12, and this direction is the R12 hat direction. Okay, um, so if we were to draw a free body diagram of both of these, um, we would draw object one and object two, um, and then we would say for object two, we have a force that's acting on its center of mass in, this, in that direction, and this would be F one two, in other words, the force from object one on object two, um, and then on object one, we would have also have a force at its center of mass directed toward object two, and this is F two one, the force of two on one. Um, and so th this would these would be the free body diagrams of both of these. Um, of course, I'm assuming that these are out in space, so there's no other forces acting on the two of them. Um, similarly, we also talked about the electromagnetic the electric force so q1 q2 um, times a constant k r12 squared the r12 hat direction um, and so this is the same thing so we just have one our object one our object two we have this vector you know r12 which is going from one to to object two um, and so if we did our free body diagrams for this, uh, it would look exactly the same. We have F21 um, and F12. This is in the case where Q1, Q2 is less than zero, right? If they have opposite charges. Um, if they had like charges, then we would see that the force of two on one would be pushing it away, and also the force of one on two would be pushing object two away. Um, so in this case, you know, we have two different free body diagrams depending on whether the charges are the same or whether they're different. Uh, and then there, there's another long range force, um, and it's the magnetic force. Uh, and that's a bit more complicated. Um, for now, I'm just going to write it as um, Q times the velocity cross um, the magnetic field. Um, and then this is something that you're going to look at more um, next semester. Um, in, uh, in physics 114. And you can see that in this, even the force already has a cross product in it. Um, which is why, you know, I've been saying a lot that cross products and vectors are going to be even more important next semester um, than they have been this semester. <clears throat> but in this class, you know, the only long range forces we're really going to be talking about are gravity uh, and the uh, electric force.